Next meeting. Okay. <laughs> seven o'clock. Being seven o'clock, we'd like to call to order uh, the regular council meeting of the township of McNabb Brayside for February the 2nd. Uh, noted that all of council is present. Are there any disclosure of uh, pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof? No, sir. Saying none, uh, I need a mover and seconder for the adoption of this evening's agenda. Councillor Broom, Deputy Mayor Armston, there are no changes or alterations. All in favor? Carried, thank you. We have a delegation this evening under 4.1. I need a mover and seconder for Mr. Ben Gardner, Armpire Regional Health Foundation. Moved by Councillor Lang, second by Councillor Jacob. Um, are you there, Ben? I am. There we go. Well, can you hear me? Long time no see. It has been a while. It has been a while. Well, welcome. Thank you very much. And I'll just turn the floor over to yourself and you can uh, give us your presentation. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Well, you know, hi everybody. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time. Um, I just wanted to thank you personally for McNabb Brayside's support of our come home to great care campaign. You know, I also think this is a, a perfect opportunity for me to give you a quick update on its progress and a little bit of insight into our plans this year. Um, so let me back up for a second. Again, my name is Ben Gardner. I'm the executive director of the Arm Pro Regional Health Foundation. I was actually born and raised in McNabb Brayside. So quite honestly, it's, uh, it's so great to be home, you know, and making a difference in the community that I love. So thank you very much for, for having me again. So, you know, first of all, what is the Come Home to Great Care campaign and why do we need it? So I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with it, but um, our catchment area, the catchment area of Armprior Regional Health is not just the town of Armprior, but it extends from McNabb Brayside, uh, it's parts of Lanark County and even uh, the city of Ottawa. So over 46,000 people use our hospital and our long-term care facility, but this is where the problem starts. You know, because the nursing home is uh, used by such a big catchment area, it means that the waiting list keeps growing. And this puts strain on families who have to travel long distance when their loved ones are placed in facilities outside of their local area. So that's why we were so happy when the Premier announced that they approved 36 additional long-term care beds. But that meant that we needed to raise $5 million to make sure that that building met Ministry of Long-Term Care standards. So many of our partners, uh, including the township of McNabb Brayside, jumped at the opportunity to help out. So you guys pledged a significant investment to this project and this support has been so important to the success that we've seen so far. But then COVID-19 showed up and it created so many unknowns. You know, will there be delays? How will this affect our community and the people who live within them? Even with all of the limitations and concerns, we are happy to share that the construction itself has not been delayed. The construction is actually at 65% complete and we're currently on target to uh, open to have people living in the New Grove nursing home by late August of 2021. And just to give you a little bit of fundraising insight, we're just about to make an announcement that we've reached the 85% mark of the campaign. So the building's up, you know, staff, residents, uh, community partners, everybody's getting excited. Um, you know, it, it's, and we have to thank you again. So Kent, since uh, the COVID-19 pandemic began, we've seen uh, our community really come together. We knew that fundraising needed to be different. You know, innovation is a key trait of a high performing charity. So we pivoted to include a fully online catch the ace lottery, which is now going into week 37. We relaunched our Grateful Patient Program. 
We are quietly sharing that we're going to be launching a Jeep lottery in the spring. We've seen so much support from businesses, from partners, from community members. Um, needless to say, we're lucky to live in this community. And we're focused on doing our part to close out and complete this campaign. But we still need a little bit of help. You know, please feel forward, sorry, please feel free to share any news, you know, uh, leads, any ideas to help us do this. We're completely open to, to all ideas and fundraising initiatives. So again, you know, I kind of want to circle back to the reason why I'm here in the first place. Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping to bring great care close to home. We couldn't have done it without you. Okay. Well, thanks very much, uh, Ben. I'll open it up to the uh, floor for comments from uh, council. Comments or questions, Councillor Lang. Hi, uh, thanks, uh, Ben. Uh, good to see you again. So I just want to make a comment that I was on the original fundraising committee for the first nursing home. And, you know, once again, the community has come up, stepped up to the plate and uh, provided support both for that first initial phase and now the second. So it's really good to hear the progress that has been made. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, ben, uh, thanks very much for, for coming tonight. Um, I, I think it's personally amazing that uh, the construction remains on schedule despite the, the, the industry shutdowns and, and the impacts to not only the construction industry itself, but also the suppliers uh, that are facing uh, delays in COVID. So uh, kudos to, to the team for maintaining the schedule on the, on the project. Um, and you, you're absolutely correct. This is not a... Uh, this is not something that can be undertaken by uh, simply the town of Arncro or, or the uh, regional health authority. It really is a, a community uh, project uh, that takes all of us to, uh, to see something like this come to fruition. So kudos to, to yourself and, and the team. Uh, you deserve mm -hmm. a, a wondrous uh, pat on the back and a round of applause. So uh, thank you very much and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I, I'd just like to add my uh, comments, Ben. It's, um, I, I looked through the uh, pictures of the construction that you sent uh, to us. Uh, I'm sure that you're sharing that uh, on a web page or somehow throughout uh, the service area, uh, like not just Aaron Prairie, as you said, but all around Ottawa and Pakenham, all the areas that's uh, going to be serviced by this building. And uh, I was amazed to see how far along and, and what, a, what a significant change to the building that has occurred. And uh, um, I too was kind of wondering uh, about how COVID would, would affect um, the construction of it because there's been a shortage uh, in certain areas of, of building supplies. But it appears that uh, whoever is uh, on the job there has, has uh, been able to uh, keep moving the, the project forward. Uh, very glad to see it. Um, as uh, Deputy Mayor Armson uh, said, uh, you know, many, many thanks to all the folks, uh, the, to Eric Hanna and yourself and, and the team that have uh, worked uh, from the be beginning. Uh, I, I can remember back, uh, I think uh, Councillor Lang attended this meeting too, back at the, in the original role uh, when the announcements were made uh, about expanding the role when uh, uh, former Premier Wynn was there at that time. And uh, so it's, it's been, uh, it's been a, certainly a, a an effort by everyone to keep it moving and, and uh, as, as you say, nearing completion, uh, which we'll all be uh, grateful to see. And, and uh, it, it's a great thing for uh, the residents of, of this entire area. 
So thanks for bringing this information to us this evening and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thanks, Ben. See you later. Okay, we're down to uh, 6.1, uh, the January 19th regular council meeting minutes. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Jacob, Councillor Lang, any questions or comments about the minutes as presented? All in favor of receiving his uh, information or as presented, carried, thank you. We're on to uh, reports. Um, just change the thing, I think it's 7.1, uh, mover, uh, 2020 financial overview. A mover and seconder, please. Councillor Broome, Deputy Mayor Armstrong, Ms. Coglin, please. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, just in keeping with past practice, uh, bringing forward just a financial overview for uh, the month of December. Um, there was quite a bit of, of money uh, spent or expended over the month of December, the bulk of that being uh, related to the payments to both the county and then all the corresponding school boards, as well as payments again for some of the capital roads programs that were approved through the, the 2020 capital uh, projects. And so we had a total of uh, just a little over $3.2 million dollars um, and then as well, we had, uh, we received our additional $39,000 from the Safe Research program that I had brought forward information on, I believe at the last council meeting. And then another notable payment is our, our Q3 payment through uh, Stewardship Ontario. Um, so the figures that you see here, again, these are, are still preliminary figures. Uh, I'm now into the year end process and the audit has been scheduled for mid-March of 2021 and then once that's been finalized the auditor will finalize our financial statements and then those will be brought back for council uh, for final adoption probably late April maybe early May at the latest provided COVID doesn't impact this again. Okay thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor Armson. Um, just to that, Kelly, um, the audit itself, can that be done virtually or do, or do they have to be in the office to do that? No, so we're able to do it virtually. We did last year as well. Last year was uh, a lot more challenging because we were relying on email to send a lot of the information back and forth or dropping off information, um, but McKillikins uh, has actually established a secure uh, site that we can upload any of our documents to. Um, we use that same portal uh, to complete the procedural audit as well. So I, in discussions with uh, Jason Healy, who's the accountant that looks after our, uh, our account, um, we are planning on proceeding with the virtual uh, audit. If need be, uh, we could bring him on site and, and put them in the council chambers, but it's it's not that convenient because all the information is on the staff uh, side of the building. So I, I think we'll, we'll be able to get by with just using that online portal. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I just one, uh, Ms. Coughlin is, is uh, are you aware of any other outstanding debts uh, that the township has? Um, uh, I'm in only interested in large debt for pay outstanding uh, payments required. So one of the items would be on this evening's agenda. Um, that that payment is still outstanding. That would be uh, probably the most significant one left. Uh, but for the most part, all the department heads have done an excellent job in, in contacting all of their vendors and, and ensuring that they've got their invoices in so we can get those, those closed off. But yeah, the only item, item would be the other uh, item up for discussion later on this evening. Thank you. Any other questions? 
All in favor of the recommendation? Carried, thank you. So 7.2, Treasury Department report to council remuneration and other expenses. Mover and seconder, please. Councilor Jacob, Deputy Mayor Armstead. Um, Ms. Coughlin, please. Yeah, so again, annually, this is uh, something that the treasurers are required to bring forward uh, to council for adoption. It's basically a summary, very high level of um, the wages, any expenses that were paid out on behalf of council members to attend conventions, seminars, or things like that um, for mileage or other miscellaneous expenses. Um, excuse me, I would like to just make a note. The wages column that you see on page two of your report is actually made up of both the wages and the benefits. Um, so you'll notice that it does look to be a bit odd that the three of the council members, there's a description um, a de deviation between the salaries. And that is due to um, the difference in the health and dental coverage between the council members, because obviously family coverage would cost more than uh, single coverage. Um, so that's the, the biggest reason for that. I will, uh, going forward, make sure that there's more of an explanation in the cover letter of the reports, but I just wanted to bring that forward um, because I, I had received a question earlier. Um, and then uh, just very, uh, I'm just gonna bring up my working sheets here. Um, so on the expenses under the mayor in particular for the 725, this is related to the cell phone. And then under, uh, um, Councillor Jacobs convention and meetings. This was made up of a few um, sessions that he participated in in 2020. Uh, that being the AMO um, AGM, the AMCTO leaders forum, as well as the uh, municipal records and information session. Um, so that's kind of it in a very high level of, of what's included in that uh, report. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the recommendation? Terry, thank you. On to information items, 8.1. Uh, Seniors Active Living Center, uh, February 2021 program calendar. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Broom, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Any questions or comments? Uh, the, the committee is certainly trying to do as much as they, they can. Um, with, uh, with the space available and the opportunities available. Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, thank you, sir. I don't have a comment per se on the calendar. I wonder if I could make a, a comment about the program itself um, without getting out of policy. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> so I, I just wanna make a comment. I. I it was brought to my attention. There's a, a YouTube video uh, about the man shed, um, which is of course related back to the salt. So uh, I hope I'm not stretching things too much, but I, I just thought it was an amazing um, format for information about the man shed to get out uh, and to see the camaraderie amongst those that participate. Uh, it, you know, it, it is an amazing uh, out, so to speak, uh, for the people that are participating in that program and, and, to, and to have that, as, as I think one person said, men don't tend to talk about themselves too much or, or their struggles. So to have that outlet uh, where they obviously feel extremely comfortable 
um, just to talk about anything and nothing, uh, I thought was amazing. And, and I thought it was a good way to, to get that message out to the community using, you know, social media as it were. <clears throat> that was it. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Jacob. I just wanted to say it's nice to see this kind of innovation bringing together a lot of our seniors active living centers across the county through funding from the federal government and United Way to bring this kind of a virtual platform to life so that we do provide that level of connection between seniors in our community. Um, and it's nice to see the number of things on this calendar and that it's not just one thing a week, for instance, that they could be able to do individually. Yeah. Anyone else? I just had uh, uh, to uh, Deputy Mayor Harmson's comment that video is has now been sent uh, or, over to Europe, you know, Western Canada, United States, Australia. It's gone uh, through many parts, uh, been sent to many parts of the world. So it's uh, the men shed. Uh, in uh, this area has been a huge success, even comparing to uh, large large centers. Uh, the men's shed in this area is done more in a short time than large centers have. So it goes to say for the, again, the, the people stepping up to support these uh, projects and help out uh, uh, senior citizens. And of course the seniors themselves participating uh, to make it the huge success that it is. So it's uh, they themselves, uh, not only the men shed, but the other uh, activities in the Senior Activity Living Center group uh, deserve a lot of credit. So if there's no other comments, all in favor of receiving this information. Carried, thank you. Uh, Ms. Young, was there any uh, one supporting the uh, uh, municipality of Mississippi Mills? No, I didn't get anybody. Thank you. So I'll need a mover and seconder to get it on the floor for information. Deputy Mayor Armiston, uh, Councillor Broom, all in favor of receiving this information? Carried, thank you. On to unfinished business 10.1, uh, Armpair Public Library, library Agreement. Uh, mover and seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Broom, uh, Councillor Lang. This was uh, in the previous meetings, we asked that a, a proper uh, recommendation uh, be wordsmith and brought back to uh, council rather than just trying to jerry rig something uh, on the run at the, the previous meeting where we agreed to do this. Um, this, uh, as I said before, is, is a, uh, I, I think, a, um, a show of, of good faith by the uh, township uh, into moving forward in in negotiation for uh, a new uh, agreement between the library and the township. Um, the library uh, expressed an interest or a desire uh, way last year that they wanted to renegotiate the, uh, the agreement. So um, this is uh, part of what the township is doing. Uh, to negotiate in good faith so that we can move forward uh, for a resolution uh, to support uh, both the library and the township. Any uh, questions or comments on this uh, recommendation? Councillor Jacob. Um, as council is very much aware of my opinion on this matter, I won't take very much time. Um, but I just wanted to thank staff for bringing forward the resolution. Um, I think it's, I'm very happy to see it on tonight's agenda. 
and I look forward to council passing it. Um, I would, given the importance of this issue for our residents, I would request a recorded vote. I'm sorry, I didn't, couldn't hear the last part. Given the importance of this issue for our residents, I request a recorded vote. <laughs> okay, you can, you can. Are you ready to call for the vote? Am I ready to call for are the you, vote? Are you ready for it? It was moved by Councillor Brum, so we'll start with Councillor Brum. For or against the resolution? Councillor Lang. For. Deputy Mayor Armston. For. Who's next? Councillor to De or Mayor Packett. For. Councillor Jacob. For. Resolution carried. Okay. Okay, we're all the way down to uh, bylaws, 13.1 uh, bylaw 2020 04, stop up and close road allowance, Macawam. I need a mover and seconder, please. Deputy Mayor Armson, Councillor Lang. So this is a bylaw to close up um, uh, a portion of uh, roadway that the township has declared surplus. Is there any uh, uh, comments? This has been going on for a couple of, well, two, maybe three years, maybe even four years, I'm not sure. It's been going on for quite a while. Deputy Mayor Armson. Oh, I'd just like to, to thank Ms. Malcolm and, and staff for being so patient as we had to go through uh, this lengthy process. I'm sure that there were numerous calls uh, back and forth apart, uh, amongst the parties involved that uh, we're not aware of. Um, and so just once again, thank you very much for the patience and, and continuing to move this file forward at the snail space that it had to go at, but it, it is what it is. And, and, and I think, uh, I think everybody has what they have has what they want at the end. So, uh, thanks again. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor of the bylaw? Carried. Thank you. Is there anyone in the public? No, no one in the public. There's no closed meeting. There's uh, information about the next meeting dates. Please note that the, the public meeting next Tuesday starts at 6.30. I point that out for a reason. Uh, mover and seconder for the confirmatory bylaw, please. Deputy Mayor Armson, Councillor Jacob, all in favor? Carrie, thank you. Very quick. I don't know why you're, I don't know why you're going red, Brian. Yeah, I, I, it's a reflection off my, uh, off my sweater. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for calling me out once again. I'll be there at 6.30 <laughs> next week. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Take care, everyone. Be safe. Bye-bye.